for series two of Amplify Sickle Cell Voices. We promised and we are always here to deliver. I'm excited here to have our panel of in advertising for the whole week. So our topic today, we always start with the basics. As um, promised, we are going to look at the pathophysiology of sickle cell disease. And we have Dr. Rob Sakalik, who's going to do a presentation for us. We have people from different parts of the world who are going to give us the state of sickle cell disease in different parts of the world. We'll start with Australia. We have Bahrain, we have Trinidad and Tobago, and we have Angola. And uh, Tim Trinidad and Tobago are also going to tell us about the blood drive that they're doing today. So I'm excited that we can, we can talk about the pathophysiology and one of the treatment options for sickle cell disease is blood transfusions or red cell exchange. They have a blood drive today. So they're going to talk about that as well. So without wasting so much of our time, we did a survey last series. And one of the things that we did very badly was timekeeping. We want to be uh, on time and finish uh, on time. The program today is after we do the presentations, we are going to break out in two different rooms. And unfortunately, I've actually sent, Zoom asked me to send a suggestion I have. When you do a webinar, you can't do rooms in Zoom. That's just the way it's set up. So because we want the patient voice, the advocates and the, the, the caregivers voices, we are going to break for five minutes where we are going to come out of Zoom webinar and come back into Zoom meetings. And then we are going to do in two different breakout rooms for 10 minutes. Then we'll come and debrief and finish off our session. We are going to be here maximum two hours, 90 minutes to two hours. So at this point, I would like to welcome my guests, of course, my, my partner and everything that I do with Natalie. Welcome, my friend. I haven't seen you this week. <laughs> it's a few minutes away from home. Welcome and hope you had a lovely week. Thank you, Agnes. Okay. Uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, so my name is Natalie Kapuya, and uh, I am the board secretary of ASCA. Uh, ASCA, which uh, is the Australian Sickle Cell Advocacy uh, Association. Uh, we are a patient advocacy group. Uh, we started this initiative uh, back in 2014 and formally registered in 2018, uh, purely to support people who are affected by sickle cell disease in Australia. Uh, we will definitely uh, delve a bit further into that, uh, reason being that we saw that there were growing numbers. Uh, we are particularly affected, you know, personally affected, and we really want to use our voices to help bring awareness and light to this, um, to this disease. And very quickly, one other thing that I will talk about um, is also to make you all guys aware that we do have our first ever uh, conference, which will be hosted this year in September from the 17th to the 18th of September. This will be a virtual conference uh, in conjunction with the blood meeting of 2021. Originally, this was said to be an in-person uh, conference, but we will be doing it uh, virtually. And uh, just to also tell you why we are doing this particular conference, um, it's um, what, what we wanted to do. Uh, okay, so to just cut it shortly, the concept around our conference is to break the barriers of, uh, of a new horizon, living with sickle cell disease within Australia. We want to showcase uh, keynote speakers who are experts in their respective fields in the world. Uh, you know, we want patient participation. It will really be about the patients uh, because as we all know, sickle cell disease is one of the most common inherited blood disorders. Um, as you know, of about 25 million people affected in the world who have been diagnosed with a sickle cell trait globally. And um, yearly, you have about 300,000 children who are born with sickle cell disease. And unfortunately, these numbers are not going down. And uh, as we all migrate around the world, we can probably even see that on our panelists, um, you know, on our panel, uh, it's very crucial that more awareness, more light is brought to this particular uh, condition. So without wasting, uh, without trying to not waste too much time, I will stop here and uh, definitely follow us through for the, you know, for further details on our conference and on ASCA. Thanks, Agnes. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Natalie. I really from the beginning, I've said I'll be drilling on time, time, time. So at this point, I'll just welcome Dr. Rob Sokolik again, 
who's uh, I've, I've connected with uh, Dr. Sokolik on LinkedIn, and uh, I've asked him if he's going to be available for the rest of the series when he has time. He's going to be presenting for us. So just quickly, before I give the floor to Dr. Sokolik, I'll just tell you a little bit about him. So for more details, I put up a LinkedIn link uh, for Dr. Sokolik. You can find him on LinkedIn. You can connect with him. So at this point, I'll give the floor to Dr. Sokolik to give us a presentation about the pathophysiology of sickle cell disease before we bring in other panelists. Thank you so much, Dr. Sokolik, for joining us. You're welcome. Thank you, Agnes. It's a pleasure to be here. I appreciate the invitation and i um, happy to start. So can you put up the slides? Uh, yes, please. I'll just share the screen. And... Okay, all right. Um, yeah, thank you. Okay, right, so um, as uh, Agnes said, I'm Rob Sakalik. I am a sickle cell disease physician. Um, now I'm working at Acubia Biotech. Next, I'll, next slide, please. So this is the first report of sickle cell disease in the archives of internal medicine in 1910. And sickle cell disease was the first molecular disease discovered. Um, it's easy, you can see it with a microscope. So you'll see the smaller cells here are um, sickle shaped and that's how it got its name. Next slide, please. And this there it is in color the way, um, this is from the New England Journal of Medicine. So the, these sickled cells are the cells that are causing all the problems and that's what I'm gonna talk about today. Next slide, please. So, this audience is familiar with the clinical problems that people have, people face with sickle cell disease. One of the most troubling is pain and is often what brings people to medical attention. But in fact, sickle cell disease is a disorder of the entire body and has these various complications. It can lead to blindness or stroke, heart failure, liver disease, bone disease, People with sickle cell disease, at least in the United States, are underemployed, they face homelessness because they can't get through school spending time in the hospital with their disease. Um, and so all of these things need to be thought about by a physician caring for patients with sickle cell disease and should be discussed with the patients. Next slide, please. So this is uh, what sickle cell disease feels like. This is from Hertz Mazer. He is an uh, artist with sickle cell disease. Next slide, please. So I'm gonna talk about the pathophysiology as Agnes said about what causes sickle cell disease. And I'll do that, um, I hope in a very straightforward way and then we can take questions if, if you have questions. So sickle cell disease is a problem with hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is a molecule inside of red blood cells. And the function of red blood cells, they use hemoglobin to carry oxygen all throughout the body. So this picture here I cribbed from a sick kids hospital in Toronto. And you can see that the hemoglobin has a heme group in it has an iron atom. That's where the oxygen is attached. It's what makes your blood red. Next slide, please. So unlike in patients who've been people who don't have sickle cell disease, sickle hemoglobin is rigid. And that's what causes the sickle shapes of the red blood cells because the hemoglobin is, is is rigid. Um, unfortunately, when these cells get to the 
small blood vessels, they have trouble fitting through and they break. They also become sticky. What ends up happening is that these sticky red blood cells and other cells in the blood form clots in the small blood vessels. And these clots are what lead to all the symptoms of sickle cell disease. You might be familiar with um, people having a heart attack if they have a clot in an artery to their heart. So it's the same kind of thing, but it's happening all over the body. Next slide, please. And that's what gives us all the symptoms that we've talked about. Next slide. And that's what gives us the pain. Next slide, please. So there are treatments for sickle cell disease. The goal of every treatment for sickle cell disease is to reduce the number of sickle cells that form blood clots. Next slide, please. And there are a number of treatments for sickle cell disease that relieve pain, improve symptoms, improve organ function, and extend people's lives. So when I started in the sickle cell clinic, uh, not that long ago in 2017, um, we had pain medicines, drinking water, staying warm. These are things patients can do for themselves. And what we had as physicians, besides pain medicines, we had blood transfusions and hydroxyurea. That was it. And that been since 1910, that's what we had. Um, when we give blood transfusions, it's important to have iron chelation, which is a treatment to get excess iron out of the body. Um, since I started our sickle cell clinic, we've had three new treatments for sickle cell disease approved in the United States. So these are glutamine, and I put the American brand names in parentheses here. Um, so glutamine, boxellator, and crizomlizabab. Um, all of these have various salutary effects. Uh, glutamine and crizolinzumab are known to reduce pain crises in sickle cell disease. There is also stem cell transplant, which is the only curative treatment for sickle cell disease. And I'll be happy, I'm sure later in this series to talk about all these different treatments, but I just wanted to mention them so you know, I wasn't just talking about the trouble with sickle cell disease. Um, there's even, as I'm sure you're aware, there's gene therapy now, which is still experimental, but is available on that basis. Next slide, please. So to summarize, so sickle cell is a problem with a disorder of blood, a disorder of hemoglobin. Problem is that the cells are rigid. These rigid blood cells form clots in the small blood vessels. There's reduced quality of life, reduced length of life. The average in the United States, the average survival of someone with sickle cell disease is about 50 years. And, you know, it's not immediately life threatening, but it's not a normal life. And it's a life with pain and with uh, medical problems. The thing to remember always, there are treatments for sickle cell disease, there are cures for sickle cell disease. And these are things that every uh, patient with sickle cell disease and every physician should be aware of and should, uh, they're not, not every treatment is for everyone, but it, they're things that you can discuss with your physicians beyond just treating pain. Not, of course, treating pain is always the first uh, first story in sickle cell disease. Next slide. So what we want to do is we want to go from this, next slide, to this. So this is a child at University of Michigan with sickle cell disease who's uh, being treated by her physicians and doing well. Next slide, please. This is Tiki Barber. So this goes over big in the States. Um, so this is American football. So Tiki Barber was a player, a professional football player for the New York Giants, which is my favorite team. He has sickle cell disease. Next slide. Miles Davis. Next slide. And this is uh, Dr. Titilopi Fasipe, 
who is a sickle cell investigator at MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston here in the States, who herself also has sickle cell disease. So what we're hoping is that this is the future. So with that, um, I'll conclude my presentation and I'd be happy to take any questions or move on to the next, uh, depending on the time. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Sokolik, for that uh, presentation. So as I said, we always go to the basics, uh, just to remind people, because we have seen in this work that we've been doing for a while now, sometimes now, you know, we take it for granted that people actually understand what sickle cell disease is. And every day we have to remind ourselves to, to just go back and go back to the basics. And that's why we started uh, with this topic today. So we'll come back to the questions. I, I want us to go through all the different countries to do our presentation. Then we go into the, the different rooms and then we'll come back for questions for Dr. Sokolik and other people on the panel. At this point, I won't take so much of the time. I will hand over to Yara, who's going to talk about Angola. And we have uh, an in interpreter, anybody who's from Angola and can't uh, um, understand uh, Yara's uh, Portuguese, you can choose um, the interpretation which is being done from uh, Portuguese to, to English. Sou vice-presidente da Associação da Minha Fóssil Fórum, a My name is Yara. I'm the vice president of the Association of Sickle Cell Disease Anemia, Iapafa, called Iapafa. É, a a Papa é uma associação sem fins lucrativos. And Iapafa is an association that is a non-profit cuja missão é representar a comunidade junto de profissionais na área de hematologia. With the goal to represent the professions the professionals in the area of sickle disease and hematology. É, trabalhamos com uma parte assistencial. We have in the part where of dealing with people. E, e políticas públicas. E é, Não tenho nenhum historial é, é, da minha família com a doença falciforme. In my family, there aren't any relate on any relates of anyone who has ever had sickle disease. Entrei para a associação por intermédio do meu amigo José Mangueira em memória. So I got into this association via a friend called José Mangueira. José Mangueira. Em memória. In his memory. E, e então dou continuidade do trabalho dele. So in his memory, I'm trying to follow through with his projects and work. Agnes? Yes, I'm here. É, fazer uma apreciação sobre anemia falciforme em Angola. Angola é um país com uma extensão territorial. Yeah, Angola is a country with a territory extent of 1,247 square kilometers. É, temos 18 províncias. There are 18 provinces in Angola. É, é, com relação a, a, a médicos e hematologistas e como nós associação é, temos estado a fazer um trabalho. In relation of doctors and researchers in hematology, we are trying to do a work. De, de, de levar a, 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 o conhecimento né, das pessoas. A, a, não, of trying to get people to awareness uh, sobre a anemia falciforme. About sickle cell disease. 
não temos médicos hematologistas em, nas 18 províncias, apenas em, em duas. We don't have many doctors hematologists in this in our country. We have only two for the whole state. E que tem dificultado às vezes os pacientes das mais províncias a, 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 a saberem mais sobre a, a, a doença. Which makes hard for patients from other provinces to become aware about of the existence of this of this disease. We have been, we are working with the Ministry of, mm -hmm. we are working with the Health Minister of our country to A hidroxureia, a hidroxureia não é grátis ainda aqui no nosso país. Estamos a, 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 a evitar esforços, né? Agora tentamos, acho que o doutor Armando em outros temas poderá abordar melhor do que eu com relação a este assunto da hidroxureia. É, eu posso falar o que nós, a associação, temos estado a fazer com relação à, à divulgação na, na comunidade sobre a minha falsiforme. We have been working to make people aware of this disease, sickle cell disease, anemia, and with the help of many associations in here in our country. E as dificuldades não, não, são, não são meu, não são poucas, não é? And it's been hard to keep up with this project. Ainda há muita falta de conhecimento. Because there are many people who don't have knowledge of this disease. Sobre a doença, não é? Agnes? Eu posso falar um bocadinho, estou nervosa. Agnes, can I stop for a few minutes because I'm so nervous? No, no, you're doing okay. You're fine. You're doing okay. Tell her she's doing fine. She's got a few minutes so that we go to another country. She's doing fine. Okay, I'll tell her. Okay. É, é, olhando, olhando para a, a, a nossa associação. Looking at our association. É, em termos de políticas públicas. Eu ia falar que é, nós, nós trabalhamos com é, acesso aos exames, né? Talking about public politics, we ha we have access to the exams. É, trabalhamos na, 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 nas questões das consultas, das, eh, eh, exames de, com os pacientes de, 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 da minha falsa forma, né? ao acesso às consultas, à educação permanente. And we are working to make it easier and give more access to people to um, appointment with doctors, exams. Trabalhamos com assistência também, né? Do pessoas mais desfavorecidas. And we we help assist those who are less unfortunate than us. Estamos agora a tentar a levar o texto do pezinho às mais pessoas. And we are trying to get tests to more provinces. Okay. Um, 
we are being mindful of time, Yara. So thank you so much for, for sharing. We still have Zoom room where we can share more with others. So is, is it okay if you wrapped up just um, a few seconds, then we go to another participant, please. Eu acredito que no decorrer da, 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 do debate se calhar vem outras I thank you for the time that you have taken for me and I believe that as we go I'll have more to share Okay, thank you so much thank you so much for, for sharing uh, we we'll definitely go back and listen again to learn more about Angola so at this point, I will take us to Bahrain. Zakaria, do you want to take over and just share a bit about Bahrain, how uh, the state of sickle cell disease there, please? Thank you, Zakaria. Yes, uh, thank you. And yes, uh, it is an opportunity, I'm glad, uh, to talk about uh, our experience in Bahrain. So I will try to make it uh, quick. Uh, uh, if, I will, if you allow me to share the, the slide. Yes, please. You should be able to. I think you can see now the slide. Uh, we chose in Bahrain to go on board, patient on board. Uh, I think something, okay. Yes. Uh, we'll escape this. So, uh, we'll, we'll talk about sickle cell, what is the major uh, things in sickle cell. It has four things, four damages, pain, emotional, and complication, and death experience. The pain crisis, chronic or emotional, experienced by loss. Uh, and the main things that emotional uh, threat is the stigma, and it is not only in, in Bahrain, this is a global experience by everybody. Uh, there is a next story in UK, I think everybody knew about it, when the patient was in the emergency and to receive a help he called trouble nine. And that show uh, the difficulties and the challenges we may find or experience as individual with the sickle cell. It is not in new care, it's everywhere. Uh, with the same challenges because of sickle cell. So time does matter, yes. It will help if we receive the proper treatment at the right time. Otherwise, our life is going to be lost. I believe patient has challenges, but doctors, they do have their own challenges. What I'm trying to say here, we are trying to understand different challenges. So to reach to zone zero, where is zero's distance between doctors and patients. And I cannot go and blame doctors. I, I'm, I'm here to try to understand what type of difficulties they may face and why we keep failing. And we cannot understand this unless we go and explore the, uh, their doctor's challenges. This is its it's it's just, just hundred years old. Everything is new about it. In Africa, still people die in, in age five, but in America, in UK, in Bahrain, Middle East, we start to experience sickle cell patients who live up to normal life. So we experience a new needs of these patients, new complications. So doctors. They just knew about sickle cell disease and complication. And also since 30 years, we have no medication, only a hydroxoria. Recently we had less of a new medication. 
also they face the same challenge, which is trust issues, stigma, as much as patients face, also doctor face this stigma from their colleagues. Also limited resources, media against them, administration challenges, and 85% of walking pay, uh, sickle cell patient to the emergency or to the hospital seeking for uh, uh, help being treated or seen by emergency doctors who know less about sickle cell. And the, uh, at the same end, uh, we have another issue which is narcotic issue. I think in America we have we have seen their story about narcotic and so many doctors being uh, being uh, faced number of charges because they are prescribing narcotics. Where is the war zone we call? In the, it is in the emergency, where is delay and ex ex stigma, blames, ignored by others, bad communication. And we have the three different type of doctors who never hesitate or prescribe uh, narcotics, or he prescribed just to co avoid conflict, or he prescribed with with uh, with this dose, which is which is not effect. Bahrain chose to explore what patient could help. Patient, if patient on board, what could give? Patient on board will give you trust between the doctors and patient. Powerful, win-win situation. You are connected as a doctor with the patient and the, you can raise the awareness and the most important, the influence of the patient. Patient influence, they have their influence on government, which can improve the the infrastructure of the medical. They have influence on patients and family, also in the media, and they can improve the quality of healthcare. They can bring you data. They can uh, improve the uh, experience of clinical trial, which is the most uh, uh, demand now to, to participate in the study and researches and to improve or to tailor new regulations and policies. What, what regulation we might need? We need in screening, we need a national patient registry, we need researchers to participate in new law and enable us to uh, in research and study and clinical trials and to improve uh, the, the, the understand and the importance of palliative care patient advocacy role and public health uh, uh, auditing and in new technology platforms like blockchain. We don't want to miss these opportunities. Advocacy, what we do and what NGS do, it has a product, help and support education and advocacy. Clients, patient, care provided, policy makers, decision makers, uh, and other advocacy group, which is me and others from different communities and from different nations. Need, we need financial, knowledge skills, data regulation, involvement rules. Where, where is the area we can implement these? We need to understand where to help. Patient will start with their parents who as all the time they deny their patient to avoid their blame, they will deny their son or their kids has a sickle cell. They have, we have another challenges in the childhood, in the school, where we, we cannot beat other uh, kids in the same classes, we miss classes. And we, we face another challenges in adolescence where the parent will feel uh, and they are blamed because their son is facing 
these type of illness. So they will let their son to take in charge and, and things will, will go wrong. We will face another problem or challenges in the college. We may miss classes, which means will affect getting the proper job or we are socially disconnected or very difficult to find a, our couple to marry. That will affect our self-esteem, emotional, sleeping. And the regulation is still not yet has a mature to understand what these, uh, what sickle cell warrior needs. And even in the death, while everybody get the rest when they leave this life, but our family don't because still the insurance don't cover our uh, uh, liabilities. So our family will take that in charge. Bahrain in number, in population, we are 1.5 million. And sickle cell patient, we are 9,000. In sickle cell trait, we are 65,000. And number of patient who has chronic is 450, uh, 80. The, the structure of uh, our society, we have the, the chairman speaker house, parliament uh, speaker, the chairman, he's the president, owner president. And that will tell you why we, we are insist to, to make him his, the chairman, because the importance of regulation, we want to tailor a new regulation to enable the other uh, uh, agency or the, uh, government agency to help us. If they don't have a law, enable us, enable them to, to help us, uh, how, how we can ask them. Uh, and we have three, I have a three deputy, uh, one for the official and the, the community, and one with who, who role, Dr. Jafar, who role, uh, who guide, uh, uh, who lead nine different doctors from different specialties and will will enable us with the knowledge, with the skills, with the experience, with the language that we can talk on the same table with the decision maker or care provider with the same page. And uh, the third deputy is for the work, uh, improving the, the, um, uh, the, the work um, um, environment and the regulation. Bahrain has, uh, management style where the patient it is in the middle and surrounded in the same table we work with the government, policy maker, decision maker, care provider, pharma and universities. All we work together and we sit together every week and we negotiate things uh, uh, that what we can do, like these things. Stigma, comprehensive care, clinical trial, all these we we, we we participate, we share knowledge, so we build things uh, that help us to, uh, to improve. And as I, I don't say that we are a unique or we are a, a successful story, but we have a, a side of strength and we have in SWAT, uh, we have a sickle cell center as a strength. We have a multidisciplinary clinic since 2012. Uh, we have a hematologist where other country uh, have difficulties to find. Screening since 2006, uh, vaccination program, infra good infrastructure, and Bahrain Sickle Cell Society, big role. We are a big family. Uh, the weaknesses, we are weak in the data. Still, we, we face challenges in the employment in the insurance. Uh, opportunities, clinical trials, social media, where, for example, what we are doing now, uh, genome center we do have in Bahrain, and this will give us lots of opportunity for the future pain management diary, registry, uh, strong influence. We have a very strong influence. We meet our leaders the prime minister every week uh, to talk about the sickle cell matter. Crown Prince support, which means this is a long term influence and 
uh, uh, support from the government. And the threat, I think it is, it is in Bahrain, but we can learn, we can share this threat stigma, still stigmas there that will slow down on the, the, the efforts. We have three or four different uh, mafia. I'm very sad when we talk about this part. Drug dealer, political, who, who come and uh, deal with sickle cell just to beat the, uh, their uh, enemies, uh, sex trafficking, and lack of consent, which doctors will will make the patient as a business, not as a human. Uh, pandemic, uh, conflict of interest, non-professional, uh, these who come and will prescribe you medication that is not relevant with the with the with the medical or with the scientist. Just give you a medicine that will help you in your pain. And this is threat. And register medicine conflict, uh, uh, trust, mistrust. If conflict will will spoil the 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 the, the care. If doctor conflict with the patient, media, all of these, and financially. Uh, what we do in Bahrain, we have uh, different uh, platform to reach to our patient and to talk to them. We receive by WhatsApp daily 16,000 K messages daily. And Instagram, we have 19,000 followers. And Twitter, we have 7.5 thousand uh, followers and we have a uh, hotline six call uh, six hotlines to receive calls one of them for doctors who who, who, who might need uh, to talk to the specialist or hotometologist as a uh, end finally we reach to this uh, the last uh, uh, slide we gain uh, a benefit the uh, average or the expectancy, uh, life expectancy is 65. Uh, we have 114 days sick leave for individuals who have a sickle cell uh, annual, uh, annually. And to, to see your, your multi, multidisciplinary clinic every eight weeks, uh, Average during admission, five days of instead of 21 days, which means more care. And to, to see or to receive your cares in the average 25 minutes, to see your doctor in six minutes. And we have 98% less visit to the emergency because the quality of uh, life received or the, the proper treatment being received by patient. Uh, and we have 62 less mortality rates uh, in adults, and we have zero mortality in the childbirth, uh, children, adolescents, maternal since 10 years or since 11 years. And we have 51 uh, percent increased using the hydroxyurea. Thank you for your patience. Wow, Zakaria. I love all your statistics. Are you going to stop sharing screen? Yes, um, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm looking. Uh, yeah, I, okay. The top uh, how to stop share? Yeah, just on the top, I can. Yeah, okay. I can help if you want. Oh, there you go. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much, Zakaria. I always learn a lot. I don't know about others, but your presentation was very, very comprehensive. And it's good to know like everything about your, your database, your, your government involvement and just everything that you're doing right. I hope people can emulate what you're doing. Um, but a lot of us on this platform are very far away, including Australia as well. 
we we really have to emulate what you what you are doing and i think um you know we can always go back come back and uh, do a consultation meeting for everyone so still being a mindful of time at this time we'll go to trinidad and tobago and uh, once we finish we're going to post one question just to test whether we are we are we are understanding and listening we are trying to formulate a question me and natalie but before we do that, we are going to go to Trinidad and Tobago. Carl, um, KW, please take over with your team. And then we are going to break off to come back into different rooms. Over to you, KW. Greetings, everyone. Hi, Gabby. I'm going to remove my mask to speak. I want to introduce some. Um, Alyssa, who is sitting here with me, Teresa, Jason right, Campbell. Some advanced apologies. My phone is running very low from listening to all the presentations, which were quite comprehensive. So if I cut off one of our other members would um, join in. Um, Dr. Wayne Labassi is on it as well. So if I do get cut off, I'm asking him to just take over and do our presentation. This morning, we are doing a blood drive. And this encompasses one of the, we talked about in terms of something called our five, pillars of health. They include self-care, testing, blood donation, and the other two are the areas that we have little or no control over, which are optimal care at public or private health. And last but not least, family integrated care. So this morning, our focus is on having persons coming to give blood, because I believe as it is around the world, all IBDs, our organization, um, the Society for Inherited and Severe Blood Disorders, um, advocates for four different IBDs, which is inherited blood disorders, von Willebrand, hemophilia, bleeding, and thalassemia and sickle cell, which are genetic disorders. So that's a, that's a, a, a canvas on which we're gonna operate this morning. I just wanna quickly introduce Ms. Drayton Campbell, who will give a sense of why we are doing the blood drive and mainly from her perspective. So, just so, if you cut off, um, I don't know how good this is. Are you here? Yeah. Yeah. Hi, good morning. Hi. Um, my name is Julissa Drayton Campbell, and I am the mother of a 22 year old sickle cell patient. So, um, I'm really very interested um, about there being blood available for the patients when it's required. So I have been a donor since I could have become a donor and um, having gotten in contact with Kyle and the society, KW Young and the society, we have, I have been kind of like pushing this head. So, Real pushing. <laughs> so um, what we have been doing um, is informing the public and getting them um, a more aware of why it is it's necessary to donate blood, not just give blood when it's required from someone that they know. So we have been having these blood drives, taking the blood drives to the community so that it'll be easier for them to come out and give, you know, meeting them instead of having them come meet us. As you know, it, people will be more willing to give if they, if it's easier to access. So uh, in Trinidad, we need like and, six, Tobago. and Tobago, we need about 65,000 pints of blood. And if we wait for people on their own to um, donate, we're not going to reach that at all. So we are out here trying to, you know, inform the community what is required why it is required and that it's also something that will help them if they also give blood. That's several. 
Just to add a bit, um, sorry to interrupt, but there are several benefits. We have learned that there are several benefits to giving blood. One, which is losing lots of calories. I don't know the actual amount. So if you want to lose some weight and you know not be as fat as I am, then you're, you're good to go. <laughs> Your body is forced to make new blood once you donate blood. And I will tell you, seven years ago, before I joined this organization, none of this made a difference to me. Everything that I do presently, and this is this is my tribe here. So we have Jalissa, um, Kieran is going to come in in a while. Um, the flavic is on already. Uh, all of them have met since I've joined this organization. So blood donation never made a difference to me. Um, whilst I've had one, I think maybe two transfusions all my life. So we've learned as well that if you are diabetes and you're well controlled with medication, you can give blood. High blood pressure, well controlled with medication, you can give blood. So these are some of the things that people generally tell you, I can't give blood for. And we are now in a position to encourage them to come out, um, let the nurses here tell them what is possible. So I want to ask uh, Mr. Blackman now, Kieran Blackman, to join and talk a bit about testing and how we try to tie it in. This hasn't been done as yet. Um, we're still working on that process. So Kieran, over to you. Okay, so who's taking over KW? Hello. Yes, yes. Mr. Wayne, if it's you, you are mute. I'll, um, while Kieran gets set up, let me, let me just jump a little bit. And, um, oh, we are in the middle of the of setting up for the, for the drive. A lot of things ran late this morning. No, he's fine. Testing. Now. Um, <laughs> I've learned. He's on Sorry? mute. He's on mute. You can go ahead. Okay. Thanks a lot. So testing, as as we have learned, well, from one Dr. Maisha, this is one of the key things that have jumped out to me last, I think, two or three weeks, that testing for sickle cell treat looks forward while testing for sickle cell disease uh, looks backward. And um, it is important if we are able to attempt to slow the prevalence to really have two types. You need to sell newborn tests. And for those who are already living, just have yourself tested and make decisions about how you'll pro procreate and decide um, whether you're going to have children with or without someone who has sickle cell treat. So that's, that's how simple it is. What we're trying to attempt and... All right, um, I think you need to promote, um, Agnes, promote Mr. Blackman, please, if you can. Yeah, so... What we found is that if you are able to add testing in an event that's already happening, then people are more inclined to opt in. And uh, we've been having this idea for a while. So in newborn screening has been well established in Tobago, which is our sister isle, for at least 10 years, folks. At least 10 years. It's a major global contributor to the newborn screening program. And Trinidad is, is still trying to get set up. Um, we certainly have the ability to um, test for our, our population. Why is it 1.4 million people? Uh, it's not as vast as the country. So the, the newborn screening, most of the hospitals that are delivering babies can't test. We understand that they do test, but it's not uh, a universal thing. I, I'm trying to understand the difference, but the actual program exists in Tobago. So we are now trying to get adults um, to test, to make decisions about how they will frame their lives, have their children. So you can now inform your generations um, about, about trade. And as I found out from Farron Dozier, um, the trade can have many health issues. So besides, oh, you, you on? Yes. I got Okay. <clears throat> KW, can we have Mr. Blackman or somebody else to take over? We're just being mindful of time. We've got a few minutes remaining. Thank you. Yeah. What, what I was saying, as, as, as Kyle was saying, um, in Tobago, we have a, a newborn screening program. 
but um but in but in in, in the main island of Trinidad, um only only in Port of Spain, which is the, the capital city, only in the, that hospital, um, that's the only other place that there's newborn screening taking place at the moment. So as a result, we 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 have a a, a lack of statistics, a lack of data. All right. So we don't really have accurate we don't really have accurate information to say what percentage of our population has sickle cell anemia, what what genotypes they have, and um and, and how many people have the trait, right? So that that also results in in some issues in, in care later in life. As uh, for instance, we don't have a transcranial Doppler um, available in, 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 in the main hospital, in the main clinic in Trinidad, right? So, um, you know, things like that. So we, we, do, we do suffer a lot of young um, children uh, we have seen a lot of young children suffering strokes and, and, and they're not getting the preventative care in that aspect um, being monitored by transcranial Doppler scans um, when necessary. Um, the, the care otherwise is, is, is good be, uh, since, since the introduction of the hematology clinic, right? Uh, but one of the issues we have is, um, is, is the blood shortage and that's one of the reasons why we're promoting these blood drives. Because I mean, in Trinidad, we need 65,000 units of blood. And last year during the pandemic, we only got 9,000, right? So that's, that's a really critical shortage. And for instance, I could say for myself, I, I have O negative blood, which is a rare blood type. And some years ago, I, I needed four pints of blood. And it, it took me almost a week to get that blood, right? And, and if, I didn't, if I didn't get it when I got, got it, I probably wouldn't have been here today, right? So um, for reasons like that, we, we get active and we really um, promote um, Blood donation, um, it, it's 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 benefits, health benefits as well as um, as, as how it benefits the people who receive them. Oh, the blood. Pardon? Okay, so um, just wanna, do we have any more time? I want to introduce one of our members. Um, no, Dana, I, think, I think That's let's it? go back to once we come back because we need to include other people into the different. Right. Rooms. Then when we come back, we're, going, we're coming to debrief. That was great. I, I was enjoying the discussion we're having with. Uh, Me too. <laughs> and then we forgot the rest. <laughs> well, at least I visited the three rooms. Oh, yeah. so I'm glad I, I I did visit different rooms. Okay. Um, so waiting for a few people to come back. So Dr. Sokolik, are you coming to do the gene therapy presentation next week? Because we have curative therapies next week. I'm happy to do that. I sent you my presentation some time ago, right? Yes, yes, I have it. Right, so in two weeks, right? In two weeks. It's, it's next week. Next week. Next Saturday. <laughs> Saturday, 7 a.m. Yes, please. If not, we That's, can change it. Tell me your pro, we'll talk. Tell me your Yeah, program. we'll talk offline, yes. Agnes, but in general, yes, I'm happy to do it. Okay, thank awesome. you. Awesome. Uh, is everyone here, Natalie? Uh, I have 15 participants. I hope that everyone is here. I closed the rooms. Okay. Uh, I hope everyone had a good time wherever they were. I saw a lot of people swarming to the uh, the advocates room. Uh, looks like there must have been a very good party day. <laughs> it's yeah. good. Yeah. We definitely need, uh, we need advocate voices, you know, for this awareness uh, work. Yeah, uh, Agnes. No, I think, I think at this point, people are in different rooms. I think we'll start, because we are in the advocates room. Ginger will just summarize for us. And then anyone else who has, well, uh, Isabella, the room where you were, and others, then we can just wrap up, because we want to finish on time. So Isabella, uh, sorry, Ginger, over to you. Well, we, yes, we, had a, we did have a good party in there. Um, we had people from Angola, from Kenya, from here from the United States, um, and Trinidad. And um, basically, you know, we talked about how you start as an advocate. First, learning about yourself and, um, you know, improving your own condition and being able to share that with others. You know, um, not allowing people not to talk, to, to feel stigmatized, to feel ashamed. Um, and for people, you know, to help people get rid of that and then to turn around and address the stigmatization and the healthcare disparities with the healthcare providers that you're working with, whether it's in the emergency room, um, you know, you're an adult and you're going for treatment, talk to that nurse, 
to that uh, resident and attending a physician, you know, I just strike up conversations with them. And why did you choose this career? And then go on to telling them, you know, what my story is. And no matter how much pain you're in, um, you know, how difficult it is to breathe, to humanize yourself. And like Kyle chimed in after, you know, the best time to advocate really is when you're healthy. Actually, the best time to advocate is anytime you need to advocate. Uh, but yes, when you're healthy, you know, you don't, you're not facing your own physical challenges at the moment, and you can go and talk from administration down. You know, it's very important to make connections with administration, the president of your hospital, the chief of staff, the chief of medicine, the chief of pediatric and adult hematology, the director of emergency medicine. You have to connect with these people. You can't just rely on, I have a problem, I'm going to call the ombudsman or the patient advocate. You got to talk to the people who are making the policy you know, and say that things have to change. You know, you have to address um, employees here in your hospital who have a track record of being disrespectful and unprofessional with your patients. You don't understand how much power you actually have until you start to use it, you know, but when we talk about the doctors who are in our care, particularly in pediatrics, and many of those who have dedicated their lives to single cell treatment here, they, you know, tremendous compassion. Not everybody, but most. And um, Zachariah made that point. Doctors are facing challenges too, and we can also advocate for them because a lot of times they're up against policy. You know, so if we do not speak up and don't advocate for ourselves um, properly, you know, without extra emotion, without profanity and yelling and all these other things, but to really have a conversation, you have to talk to the people in power. And that's where you're going to start to see change. And as um, the last conversation was, talk to people everywhere around you, in your workplace, at your school, in your neighborhood. You have to have the conversation and take away the stigmatization. I have a um, half fair travel card. So when I you know, go to use it and I get this look, I'm fine with telling the train operator or the bus driver, I have sickle cell disease. It's a rare disease. And it is considered a disability here. That's why I have this card. And so then they'll say, oh, I knew somebody with sickle cell or I have sickle cell in my family. It is so prevalent that everywhere we go to advocate here with um, the Sickle Cell Thalassemia Patients Network, we always have somebody within this presentation who is affected by sickle cell in some way. And so the effort is to take those people who have been touched, even in a small way, and turn them into advocates as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Natalie, before we proceed, can you see the CC captions, please? I can't see them here. I've been trying to, you're supposed to activate that for Ari. Um, the other room we had, how many rooms did we have? Anybody ha has anything to share, please? Even if you are not in any rooms, please. Um, Sharon, Sharon, you had something to say. Do you have anything to, to, to contribute? So I'm mute. Yeah, Sharon, you're mute. Okay, I'll take I'll take it to okay. Go ahead, Sharon. Oh, Agnes, nothing much, but I just wanted to say thank you for this uh for these sessions. It has been very educative, and I'm looking forward to attending much more. And we discuss more on how we can help our countries in terms of uh, advocating and also finding the treatment for sickle cell and even those countries that are still down on treatment and the drugs, we can help them come up and know what to do. A way forward will be good. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sharon. Isabella, you had a good talk with the doctor in that room. So can you share, please? Okay, I'll share. Um, basically, um, Dr. S uh, Sokolich and I were discussing um, about bone marrow transplant with um, adults and the different types of bone marrow transplants. You don't always have to be a sibling donor for it to be successful. There are um, new, uh, new treatments out there to make bone marrow transplant um, a very successful way of um, curing sickle cell. Okay. Dr. Well, thank you for Sokolich. That. Lucky, lucky for us, we have a curative therapist next week. So come and talk more, but I'll give the floor to Dr. Sokolich just to... <coughs> Tell us more about that, please. Thank you. Yeah. So, you know, I was just talking to uh, Isabella, and 
we there's been great revolutions in bone marrow transplant from the time I've been in the hospital. Um, what we like to see now is that's actually pretty much true. So it is true that ideally we would like a sibling donor, uh, HLA identical, but that doesn't have to be the case. And we can get unrelated donors, we can get cord blood donors, which are much more successful in children. We can get parents or half match siblings or cousins. And so, you know, there's a wide range of options. As I was saying to Isabella, transplant isn't for everybody, but certainly it's worth having the conversation at least with your own doctor. So I've had several patients I sent to transplant who have done well. I've had several patients who told me they wouldn't consider transplant and that's fine. And, you know, I've cared for them the same. So it is appropriate. I should also just echo what Ginger said um, about advocacy and about talking to me and talking when you're not in pain and talking rationally, you know, my own recent experience has um, demonstrated the wisdom in that approach. So I would, I would agree with that. And your doctor should be your advocates with the administration. I mean, the truth of the matter is it's different hearing from a patient than it is from a physician, but ideally the administration hears both voices. And the more united you are, you know, our problem in Rhode Island was we had no uh, sickle cell disease organization and that was one of our goals. Um, but the more you can speak with a united voice, the more you can be listened to. Yes, yes, definitely. And I think for us, all of us on this group, we, we sort of share a common goal. And that's why for the second year, again, we've come together because we value the, the voice of uh, an advocate. We value ourselves to become a united voice. And I always say this, that this is a, us like collective, because this can't happen if we don't join together and speak the same voice. But also in terms of uh, being your advocate, I so believe in that, that you know, you, you, you have to have your voice heard. Fortunately, most parts of the, the world or other parts of the world, let me not say most, other parts of the world, uh, the patient's voice is really, really respected. But in other places of the, the world also, it's very difficult. But you have to just find uh, a balance and be diplomatic how you, you go about uh, raising your, your concerns with the doctors. It's very difficult. I know other parts of the world where the doctors feel like they're mini God, if you can say it that way. But you just have to find a balance and see how you can advocate for yourself and your child and just see the best outcome possible. So um, if anybody um, has anything to share, we've got one minute you can uh, share anything. Uh, Moape, Zakaria, we also have, I have Masha, Masha from Angola. Masha, did you want to say something? No, Agnes, uh, good afternoon all. Uh, actually, I, I got late in the room. I could uh, not participate in total, but I would like to thank you all for the chain of the ideas. And I hope next time I can, I can join early, not every problems with the internet. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Masha. Jamie, do you have anything to say? Anything to contribute? Uh, uh, no, maybe just to add what we discussed, myself and Ari paused in our room. It was just myself and Ari, and we were talking about how we manage our pain during crisis. And like just what the doctor was saying, like BMT is not for everyone. So. It just boils down to, I guess, knowing your body. And so which pain management is the same, I think. It's once you understand your body and you listen to it, you really can manage it mostly at home before you actually go to the hospital. Uh, both myself and Ari, we agree on that, that some pain, depending on what your body is telling you, can actually just go away by rest and drinking loads of water. 
of course drinking lots of water it's like part of our daily life but there's even more and you make sure you get more fluids in add in your orange juice for vitamin c your milk for vitamin d and then just see what it tells you and then you start slow and probably and be if you need to go to the hospital then you go to the hospital but then just listen to your body and then just follow it yeah and thank you so much for today as well Thank you, Jamie. I realized it was just the two of you. So I was actually trying to bring you back to the doctor's room and then our host disappeared. I couldn't find her. <laughs> yeah, Natalie did come and then bring us back. I'm like, oh, it's just the two of us, Addy. I don't know. I think eventually else, you were yeah. moved to the advocate's room. Uh, yeah. uh, okay, okay. Yes, we we got to dream. the room where the doctor yeah. was talking about BMT. So we yeah, exactly. learned a little so, bit. Yeah. You know, yeah, we'll have to yeah. next week again so we can ask questions. Are, are you does speak sometimes? I've just posted in the in the in the uh, group. Are do you want to say something? I don't know that she can see it. Uh, anyone else wants to share, especially about uh, managing pain crisis? Because it was just the two of them. Maybe somebody can can share something. Zakaria. <laughs> Yes, uh, I guess uh, as um, here, I mean, as I said, uh, the pain depended. I mean, the pain goes on three, it's, uh, three different type. One is the crisis, the other is chronic, and the, the third one is caused by emotional. It is very important either for the patient or family or even the doctor to it can understand what is the difference between these three. So we, it, can, it can help to reduce these, uh, the, the experience of pain and how to uh, maintain it well. And it is very important that this information be to be shared between these three parties which is the family and the patients and the doctors to understand what type of care could, uh, could help or what kind of uh, treatment could, could start. And uh, especially these patients who come in daily basis to the emergency, an accident and emergency room, it need to be focused very carefully with these patients it, they may need uh, a different type of different support rather than only medication. They might, you, the, the, med the caregiver can, you might need to, uh, uh, to transfer this patient to the multidisciplinary or comprehensive care where the uh, psych uh, psychologist or the uh, emotional support be being uh, addressed. Our experience in Bahrain shows that uh, chronic pain is, is, is damaging the, the, the quality of life. But once we, uh, we understand this different, we, we could make the short list of 480 who face a chronic pain. And, uh, and we, we also, we had a short list of patients who has difficulties in their uh, daily uh, in, in daily their lifestyle, like finding a job, or they divorce, or they they lost someone loved in their family, or they are afraid of uh, dying. And the, the palliative care is not yet been implemented very well in the in the global. It's only provided for the uh, cancer patients, but uh, the other patient they get less uh, palliative care. But while the sickle cell uh, uh, warrior need a palliative care and their family since they born, these uh, these culture been, need to be uh, or the education. It is not only for the patient. We work very hard to educate even the care provider the importance of palliative care reduce the, the pain experience in the sickle cell. Uh, in the sickle cell. Also in the, in the crisis, uh, the right dose, the right time, 
uh, it can help a lot within uh, 45 minutes, within one, within the first two hour could manage this crisis and send this patient back home and he can continue his life normally. If, uh, if no, if uh, it being uh, interrupted, this uh, process being interrupted, it may cause him 21 days staying at hospital. Two hours is nothing compared to 21 days. These type of experience need to share and to understand. Thank you. Thank you so much, Zakaria. We are running out of time. Uh, uh, Kao, KW, just uh, three minutes max, then we, we close okay. off. Thank you very much, Agnes. First of all, I just want to say hi to Natalie. I haven't seen you for quite a while. It's nice seeing you today. Um, being here has allowed me to realize, well, us, our Trent and Tobago tribe, that Bahrain and us are quite similar in terms of population size. And I, I didn't hear all of the, the outcomes, but we will certainly now start to understand how populations around the world, even as diverse as ours, um, comparison Bahrain to Trent and Tobago, how we can certainly make a, a difference and contribute to the, to the global um, solutions. But um, I just want to thank, uh, on behalf of our TD tribe, uh, Agnes and Natalie for initiating this, this, this forum. And I hope you guys are gonna continue in, in great health, not good health, but more importantly, all the things that were said today, uh, as we know, there are a lot of agencies and organizations that have sprung up the sick cell over the last four or five years. And I strongly believe that each one brings a specific skill to the table. It means we have a lot more players, we have a lot more help. And I really hope we can bring all those um, things together to have uh, what I call the COVID effect. I was talking to Ms. Sufo, I love that name, and the, the pass about this, that we really can maximize all the persons that are involved rather than trying to figure out why there are so many. There are so many because we need so many, and I hope we can get that COVID will, where we can have the effects that we see in COVID that less than a year, even though sickle cell has been in play for a while, that we can start, start getting the results that we, uh, that we need in less than, a year, two years. I think it's quite possible. Mm. So I just want to thank you for the for the opportunity and wish everyone on the on the the, the forum a really good um, life and I'll talk to you guys soon again. Thank you, thank you so much, Natalie. I'll give you the last uh, say word of thanks before we finish and we start preparing for next week. Okay. Okay, uh, thank you very much to everyone, uh, especially to Dr. Rob Sokolik uh, for joining us uh, very early, I don't know, uh, in Rhode Island. And to all those panelists uh, today who participated in our breakout rooms, I hope that you guys had some wonderful conversations, conversations that can definitely help us uh, to share knowledge, collaborate and uh, move our course forward. Uh, we'll probably say special thanks as well to uh, Zachariah for touching on some of the things that can be improved to provide a good quality of life for those living with sickle cell disease and their families. Uh, what we always want is a great quality of life, health equity uh, for, 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 for people to, you know, to feel that they are included and that you know, this is just something else that they have to manage and live with. Uh, also, special mentions uh, to the advocates. Uh, thanks, Ginger, for that summary, especially for uh, emphasizing that it is important to advocate when we are well. Um, that is very crucial, and not just wait for those difficult moments where we might uh, we might be emotionally charged as well. And uh, it is important to have those conversations uh, with uh, the different stakeholders in this particular ecosystem. We're thinking doctors, employers, policymakers, uh, schools, uh, communities, you know, everyone has to be aware uh, of this particular condition. This is how we'll break the stigma. This is how we normalize. This is how we, uh, I think my, my new favorite word these days is health equity for sickle cell disease. So maybe let's stick with that. <laughs> and uh, uh, And of course we do acknowledge the challenges that doctors also face. So let's all remember as advocates to also um, always, you know, to also fo focus on them because uh, we uh, as a community of advocates need them uh, in order to actually move forward. 
And obviously with that, I also value the patient expert. I believe in our patients, we need to speak up more, advocate more again, so that uh, we always know what's happening with us. So let's see ourselves as, you know, the client and, you know, wanting to get better results from the people who look after us. So we have a very important voice, which has to be valued. And the more we speak with a united voice, the better off we will all be. Uh, with that, thank you very much. I hope that you join us again next week, uh, where we will be delving into SCD treatments. And uh, before that as well, I just want to remind Can I you- Can I it was before we end? Uh, yes, just give me a moment. Uh, before we also go, I would just like to remind you all of our first ever ASCA conference, which will be happening from the 17th of September to the 18th of September this year. And uh, if you need any more details about that, please uh, go to uh, askaconf.org. I will share that link in the chat box. So thank you very much, everyone. Thank you so much, everyone. So we are back again next Could week. Could I say thanks to everyone? Um, yeah, so 9 p.m. next week, I have uh, Curative Therapies and India is um, heading that session, but all of us are encouraged to again okay. uh, attend and we'll be able to also share our experiences. Sorry, who wanted to say something? Yes, uh, from Yara. From Yara, I would like to say that it's been an honor and a great privilege to listen to all of you. And we say special thanks to Dr. Rob and to Dr. Zakaria as well. And to Mrs. Agni for the way that she's been conducting this meeting and and that we have learned much and got knowledge from this meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, uh, Yara and Rujano. Dr. Rob, before we go, you can want to say the last word? <laughs> oh, no. Well, all I would say is I appreciate the time and the effort to, uh, you know, that you guys put into this. I think it's great that we can do this worldwide now. And, you know, there's great opportunity for really advanced science in sickle cell disease, but there's also great opportunity for the most basic medicine and the most basic self-care. And I'll just echo, I think it all needs to be uh, thought of when we care for sickle cell disease. Um, we can talk about it more offline, but there's a lot I could say about that. I thank you all for your time. I appreciate it. Okay, okay. Well, thank you so much, everyone. We gotta go. I just hope one day we'll be able to do this face-to-face, -face. COVID allowing. Maybe next year we can meet somewhere or you guys can come to Australia to amplify our sickle cell voices. That's my dream, one day. <laughs> so good night, good day, everyone. We'll see you next week, Saturday, same time. And this time we're going to use the meetings. Then we don't have to run around the way we did today. Okay. Thank you so much, thank everyone. You. Have a nice day. Yeah. Good night, okay. good day. Thank you. Thank you. Can I contact you at Lifespan after Focal Lake? No, not Lifespan. Can